In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can make an NPC follow you around the game. This is for puzzles like, you know, in King's Quest, you have to find the carrot. If you have the carrot, the goat will start following you. And then if you walk by the troll at the bridge, the goat will um, knock the troll off the bridge. So how do we, you know, if we have something, an NPC will start following us around. So let's look at this little scenario that we have here. We have uh, four rooms hooked up in a box. We've got a Triceratops in room one, and we have some lettuce in room one, and the player is in room one. So what we want to do is, um, the first way to approach this is we need some variable that says whether the NPC is going to follow us around, whether it should be following us. So I'm going to make a variable here called NPC following you. So there's NPC following you, or Triceratops follow. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to click Add, and its default value is 0. And when the NPC is supposed to follow us, we'll set it to 1. All right, so then let's go to Events. So the next thing we're going to do is make an event. An event is a, some code that runs every turn, and I'm going to call it like Check NPC Follow here. And what it's going to do is it's going to check if the NPC should be following us or not. So let me click Create. So every turn, the game's going to say, hey, should the Triceratops be following us or not? So what I'm going to do is right click and say, I'm going to select the option, make an NPC follow you if you have something. So I'm going to click that box. And you can see now we've got some code. And you'll have to change wherever it says lettuce, change that to your thing. Wherever it says triceratops, change that to whatever it is in your game. So we're going to say here, uh, if the lettuce, the lettuce's location is the player, and the triceratops location is the player's location, which means they're in the same room, then what we're going to do is test that variable, NPC following you. If their NPC isn't following us, which means it's zero, now we're going to print a message here that says the triceratops seems interested in the lettuce. And then we're going to set our variable to 1. So if all the conditions are right, we're going to set our variable to 1. And why do we have this if statement here? It's Because otherwise, every time the NPC is, otherwise it'll just keep printing out the Triceratops seems interested in the lettuce anytime we're all, we're in the same place. And it just gets annoying. We just want this message once. That's what's going on here. We just want this message once. If the player's uh, not in the same place, or is not in the right place and doesn't have the lettuce, then we're going to set NPC following you to zero. Because maybe we have the lettuce, but we're not in the same room as the Triceratops. Or maybe we're in the same room as the Triceratops, but we don't have the lettuce. So if we have the lettuce in the right place, then we're going to make the NPC follow us. Otherwise, we're not going to, the NPC won't follow us. So I'm going to save my project now. Let me go back to my events. I just want to check that that code is still there. All right, that is good. Now I should be able to, um, just, just for testing, I'm going to put in running event. I just want to see that this works. Save, run, okay. So there I am. I'm going to type wait. Time passes. See how it's running that event, running that event, running that event? It's checking to see whether the NPC should be following us. So now I don't need that code anymore. File, save. All right, now let me take the lettuce. Take it. The Triceratops seems interested in the lettuce. Aha, now I'm going to type the word vars here, and you can see NPC following you is now set to 1, which means we now set that variable to indicate the NPC is supposed to follow us. Now, um, now notice we only get that message once. So let me take the lettuce. See, we're not getting the, we, don't, we only get that message once. All right, so now comes the part where 
we want to say if the NPC is supposed to follow us, make the NPC follow us. Now, now, now we've we said whether the NPC should be following us. Now we're actually going to make the NPC follow us. So for that, we need a function. And let's call it, you know, make Triceratops follow us. All right. And I'm going to click add. Well, I'll just say make, make Triceratops follow. I'll click add. Okay, so now I have a new function here. So in here, what I'm going to do is say, if the NP, if the Triceratops is supposed to be following me, put it in my room. Put it in the same place as me. And we have a code stub for that. So there it is. Make an NPC follow you if you have something. After sentence. We want to make sure we select the, the one that says after sentence here. Moves the NPC to your location if it's following you. This should be used in an after after move sentence, and I'll show you that in a second. So what this is going to do is say, hey, if that NPC is supposed to follow us, set its location to the player's location, move it to where the player is, and then print out some message here that, oh, you know, there's a Triceratops here. Let's clean up our tabs. There we go. All right, so there's our, let me save this. So there's our function. Now, this gets, now it gets, what we have to do is wire this up to a sentence. And so after we move, we want to put the Triceratops or the NPC where we are. So I'm going to, for the verb go north here, I'm going to say, when I go north, I want to run the function make the Triceratops follow us. But I don't want to run it instead of moving. I want to run it after moving. So I want to select after and click add. And I want to do the same thing for all the other cardinal other directions that the player could move. Now maybe we don't want up and down or something. Like maybe we, if we go up a tree, we don't want the Triceratops to be able to follow us. So if I had northeast and if I had the northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, if I had all those directions in my map, I would add those too. So what we're saying is after we've moved, make the Triceratops follow us. So let's save this and run it. And let me take the lettuce. The Triceratops seems interested in the lettuce. Now let me go east here. There's a Triceratops here. South. There's a Triceratops here, right? The Triceratops is following us because after we move, we're saying, oh wait, the tricer Triceratops is supposed to follow us. So let's put them where we are. Now watch this. If I drop the lettuce and I type vars, notice that NPC following you went back to being zero. So now the, is, he's not supposed to follow us. Now if I go west, see, no Triceratops. If I go east, there's a Triceratops here. Take the lettuce. Triceratops seems interested in us. See, now he's going to start following us again. All right, so that's now he's following us. Now, let's do something even maybe a little more slick. Maybe before we move, we should print the Triceratops follows you. So how would we do that? Well, we used an after sentence here. What we need now is a before sentence. Before moving, I want to print out that the NPC follows us. This is kind of optional, but it looks slick. So I'm going to make a function now. I'm going to go make another function. Before. Um, I'm going to call it before moving. I'm going to make a function called before moving. And in here, what I'm going to do is there's a code stub. Make an NPC follow you if you have something before sentence, or this is oh report an NPC follow you, follow you following you. All right, there. All right, report. That's the one we want. We want the before sentence. And what this does now, you're gonna have to again change your object names. This says if the um, if the thing if the NPC and the player are in the same location, and the player has that thing, um, hmm, interesting. Uh, do we need this? Maybe we could rewrite this. 
I bet we could. Let's 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 try. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna say if the NPC is following us, if it's true, then print the Triceratops follows you. So let's let's try this and see if it works. Now I need to add this. I need to make a sentence here. So it's going to be the same thing. Uh, north, and I want to say before. I want to say before moving, and then I, just, I want this to be a before sentence. Before moving north, before moving south, before moving east, before moving west call that before moving function and it's going to check hey if that NPC is supposed to follow us then print the NPC follows you and that just I don't know helps creates a more vivid picture of what's going on let's test it out so there it is take the lettuce all right the triceratops is interested in the lettuce I'm going to type vars here to see what my variables are and it says that triceratops is supposed to follow us so that function before moving, it says, hey, if that guy's supposed to follow me, just print that he follows me. Take lettuce, east. See, it's printed out, the Triceratops follows you. Now we're in room two. There's a Triceratops here. So let's go south. The Triceratops follows you. Now what if I drop the lettuce? Dropped. See, now he's not following us anymore. All right, so there it is. There's kind of three pieces to this. We need an event that checks if the conditions are right for that NPC to start following us. If the conditions are right, we're gonna print uh, a message and set a variable to one. If the conditions are not met, we're gonna set that variable to zero to indicate that that NPC should not follow us. Then we need our after sentences the after moving, after moving, after moving. And you're gonna to wanna to add these for the eight directions if your game supports eight directions. And what you're gonna do in that function is use that code snippet to, uh, you're gonna to check to see, hey, if that NPC is supposed to follow you, move him to your location and print that he's there. And then that extra little bit of polish that we're gonna add is using the before sentences. Before we move, we're gonna say, hey, is that NPC supposed to follow us? If he's supposed to follow us, then print that he follows us. So there it is, that's how to make an NPC follow you. And what we really need now is, or, or you just have to use these code snippets and go in and change the variable names to be your variable names, change the object names to be your object names, and now you can, um, now you can have puzzles where, you know, you have to use um, something to uh, the, the sugar cube to get the horse to stop running away from you or to follow you somewhere else over to the blacksmith so the blacksmith can put a shoe on it or something. Or, you know, use the carrot to get the goat over to the bridge to knock the troll in the water or something. There you go. There's how you can get an NPC to follow you.